Um, what are the verses that we've learned so far? So in lessons one and two, um, let's say that verse together. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. Psalm 50, 10. Let's say it again together. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. Psalm 50, 10. And then the verse in lesson three through six was the same. So let's say that verse together. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Matthew 22, 39. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Matthew 22, 39. And the verse we had in lesson seven is the same that we have for today. So we'll talk about that one just a little bit later. First of all, I'm going to ask you some questions about the story of roll of bread. Ted's problem was that he was hungry. How was this problem solved? What, what helped his hunger? What made him he wasn't hungry anymore? Number two. Who baked the roll of nice, fresh bread? Number three, who ground the flour so fine and white? Who was the one that ground the flour? Who took his wheat to the, to the, mill, to the miller's mill? So who took the wheat to the miller's mill? And number five, who sent the sun and the rain on the farmer's field? Who sent the rain and the sun? Okay, where was the mill? Where was the mill located? Was it in town? Was it beside something? Where was it? Number two, how do you think Farmer Brown took his grain to the mill? What did he haul it in? Did he haul it in a semi? Did he haul it in a wagon? How did he haul his mill? Number three, what two things helped Farmer Brown's grain grow. So what two things helped his grain to grow? Um, what did God send that helped his grain grow? And number four, why was it right for Ted to thank God for the bread? Okay, so you think about each one of those questions and then it says time for reading class, okay? So normally what we would do at school is we would read our story together in class, but since we're not at school, you read it to your mom or something, okay? So read your story, and then we'll be ready to go on with our lesson. Okay, you need to read it before you start with your lesson because there's a lot of things about your story in your lesson. Okay, then we're ready to start on part A. Below are some things the story did not tell. Can you think which of the five people did them? So it gives you for number one through five, says match who did it with what they did. So it gives you, in the first column there, it gives you the things that they did. And they're going to ask you who it was. Who did this? Who did that? Then on the other column, it says the five people. The miller, mother, the farmer, God, and the baker. You read each of those things, and you draw a line from the little dot beside the sentence to the little dot beside the person who it was. So who had a horse? Draw a line of who had a horse. Who spent money for a roll? Who worked inside a noisy mill? Who got flour from the miller and who made the grain grow? So you draw a line in front of those, you use each one one time, okay? So each person will have one line drawn to them. Part B, write an answer. Which job would you like to do? So of all the jobs that are mentioned in the story, miller, baker, all of the ones that said in the story, which job do you think would be your favorite job? And you don't have to write a complete sentence. Just simply write um, a baker, a miller, a farmer, or whatever you would have liked to have been in this story. Part C, talking about the main idea. Remember that the main idea is what the whole story is about. So it's a couple words that kind of give you an idea of what the whole story was about. So for example, when Jesus was feeding the 5,000, Jesus used fish and bread to feed the multitude, but fish and bread were not the point of the story. The main idea is that Jesus used his power to help people in need. So in the story about the fish, about Jesus feeding the 5,000, the main idea of that story was not that he had fish and bread. He could have used any kind of food, right? He could have multiplied any kind of food to make it enough. But the point of the story was to show how powerful 
Jesus was, and that he could multiply that food so everybody had enough to eat. That was the point of the story. That was the main idea. So in part C, it says, think about the main idea in the story. Draw a line underneath the title that best fits the story. So you're going to underline the best title. Which one of these, seven, eight, or nine? What was the point of the story? Was it how grain grows? Was it what people do for work? Or was it help, helpers in making bread? What was the whole story kind of about? Okay, so you decide when you underline the one you think this whole story was about. And the next paragraph says, we know all of our food comes from God. He uses many people to help put bread on our tables. And bread is talking about food, okay? He, God, God uses many people to put food on our tables. Do you remember all who helped put the roll of fresh bread in Ted's hand? So in part D, it says, put your pencil on the dot at the word God. And don't do this right now, but when you're ready to do this, this is what you do. Put your pencil on the dot at the word God. Draw a line from the dot, from dot to dot to show in order the people God used to put the roll in Ted's hand. So around this, it gives you a bunch of people, it gives you a bunch of, um, in fact, it gives you, gives you six things. Ted, God, Baker, Farmer, Mother, and Miller. In which order did, did this roll of bread take? So let's start. It says start by putting beside God, because remember, God, God is the maker of everything, right? So he obviously had to start it. It says so you're on God. If you have your pencil on God, the next thing you would ask yourself, who did God help by sending rain, rain and sun? Okay? So God sent the rain and sun. Who did that help? Who was the next person after God sent the, sent the rain and the sun? Who did that help? And then next, that's the farmer, right? So you draw a line from the dot beside God to the dot beside farmer. Because farmer was the next, first it was God, then it was farmer. So now you're a farmer, and then you think, where did the farmer take his wheat? So the farmer grew the wheat. Then where did he take it? What happened? Where did it go next? Who handled it next? Next it was the miller, right? So after the farmer's grain grew, he took the he took the wheat to the miller, right? And that's where the miller um, ground it up and stuff. So then from the farmer, you draw it to the miller. Who had it after the miller? After the miller ground it up, made it into like flour? Who had it next? You draw a line to who had it next. And after that person, who had it next? And then if you notice, <clears throat> the very last one that you're going to go to is Ted's hands, okay? Ted's hands is going to be the last person you were at, and you're going to make this a complete shape, okay? So once you get done, there's going to be a little piece not drawn, right? It's going to be a little section that's not drawn. Finish it, and it's going to make a shape after you're completely finished, okay? So make it a complete shape. Finish connecting the rest of the dots to finish making it a shape. And this is going to show you what order the wheat took to um, get around and finally get into Ted's hand. And then in the box it says, give us this day our daily bread. Okay, and that's part of the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. On the next page, it starts with our Bible verse. They helped everyone his neighbor, Isaiah 41, 6. Let's say that verse together. They helped everyone his neighbor, Isaiah 41, 6. They helped everyone his neighbor, Isaiah 41, 6. So study that verse. Um, say it to somebody, say it to your mom, and have her sign that little triangle to show that you signed it and said so that you said it and memorized it. We cannot get along without help from other people. That is why we should help others. Okay, we should always be ready to help our neighbors whenever and however we can. And remember, our neighbor is anybody that's around us. Let's look at part E. Finish the sentences. Write the way you can help. So number 11 says, you cannot clean the whole house all by yourself, but you can help by, and then you don't have to write a complete sentence. It says you can help by, by what? What's something that you can do that would help in cleaning the house? Um, what about putting away the toys? Maybe clean the one room? Maybe sweep the floor? So there's just something that you could help to clean the house. You write something. Number 12. You cannot do all the outside work by yourself.
but you can help by, what's one way that you can help do all the work outside? And doing all the work outside means like doing the garden, planting it, hoeing it, um, tilling it, um, mowing the grass, spraying the grass, fertilizing the grass in the flower beds, planting flowers, putting down mulch, all, everything that you do outside. Um, picking up sticks, there's a lot of things you do outside. What's something out of all of that that you can think, what's one thing that you can do outside to help with the outside work? Okay, and you write something that you can help with the outside work. Part F, underline the sentence that tells something you know. Something that you know, okay? Not something that you think, something that you know for sure. It will be sunny tomorrow. Or God makes me grow. Which one is something that you know? And you underline the thing that you know. Okay, that is all for your reading lesson today. Check over it. Um, be sure you use your ruler. You have lots of drawing lines today. So make sure you use your ruler in every single part. Make sure you wrote neatly, um, spelled correctly, and did your work extremely carefully. Check over it, make sure it's neat, and yeah, do your best. And I will see you in math class.